Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Icono Clash. This game plays two to four players, takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and is made by SMG, Strange Machine Games. In Icono Clash, this is a crossover platforming arena style combat game. Uh, there's quite a few of those games out there, mainly in video game form, one of which being Smash Brothers. And if this is going to be based on those type of games on a board game. And how it's gonna work is you're gonna go through stage select, choosing a board, go through the different character selections, choosing a character, and then of course setting up your HP and what cards you're going to start with in the game and placing down your character and going. Playing two actions, moving your characters around with your boots and trying to knock your opponents out of the ring, hit them into specific traps and do as much damage to them as possible to either score points and or to eliminate them by reducing their HP to zero. Last player standing wins, but there's also a team mode and there's a competitive variant where you go throughout four rounds of play. Regardless though, that's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and get into how the game's set up and of course how you play and finally what I think about the game currently on Kickstarter. To begin the game, the first thing you're going to do is select a board or a stage. And the way you do that is there's going to have a certain number of boxes in this game and each box is going to have its own unique board. In this case here I have a front and a back side for the different choices in boards that you can play with. Uh, when you choose one of the boards, you're also gonna go ahead and choose the box that is associated with the board. That box is gonna come with all you need to play that board. Uh, it's gonna have these cards here, which are gonna be like events that are gonna happen, whether it be items that are spawning on the stage or unique hazards or benefits that are going to happen as well, where you'll be using these tokens to indicate spaces on the board that will show you how much damage or what benefits you'll be gaining. You're also gonna go ahead and set aside the card that is associated with the board, the event or item deck that is associated as well and all of the tokens that you will need. Then you're going to go ahead and choose a first player and give them a token. After that each player is going to individually pick a character and each character is going to come with their own box and everything needed for that character is inside that box. There's a base card or basic card which you're always going to be having in your hand. There's going to be a deck of cards which you will shuffle and place down. You're going to have your character which is one of these wooden tokens here that you'll be placing on one of the start spaces and there's also going to be an HP tracker. Now because mine is a prototype you're going to be getting one that's actually going to be letting you do that uh, but for me I'm going to be utilizing dice. Each player is going to get one. You can play two, three, or four players. And then you're going to have each player, from first to last player, spawn on one of the flags on the board. These are like respawn spaces. And once you've had everybody place down, make sure that everybody draws six cards from the top of their deck, and then adds the seventh card, which is their basic card, to their hand. After you have done that, and everybody else has as well, select that game mode. There's multiple game modes to play. I'm gonna kind of explain how they're all played uh, by basically explaining just the base game. Uh, there's the 2v2, which is where you play against an, a team or an opposing team of players. There's the free-for-all mode, where you're basically trying to score as much damage as you can by the end of four rounds. And then there is the, um, basically the elimination, which is the more classic version, where you're trying to eliminate players by reducing their HP from 25 down to zero. That's the basic idea of the game and how to set it up. Let's talk about how to play. Playing the game is just as simple as setting up. Once you have your board set up and all the players have their cards, six cards plus their base card, as well as their character on the board, their HP tracker, whether it be at zero or 25, and of course their title golem card, if you're playing the title golem, or one of the other character cards next to you, as well as your player board, you're ready to go. You're gonna go ahead and play two actions, but just before you do that, you're going to draw an event card, one of these cards that will detail what happens on the board before you're turn. Some of them are long-lasting effects and others are going to be something that tells you to place an item on the board for instance. In which case you'll flip the card over, you'll place it down, and you'll do what it says. Okay, place an item in this space and then you are done. Uh, then after of course you're going to take your hand of cards as well as two boots. These boots are going to be used for movement. Movement is going to be up, down, left, right, or any diagonal. And uh, then you're going to play playing cards and you have them in, in, in any order that you would like. So I can move one space, then of course I can play a card. If you have no boots, you can no longer move. You're allowed to move in spaces that are above the ground, so like mid-jump basically. But beware because there's fall damage potentially in this game and you can also fall off the board or you can be shoved off or wrung out on each of the ends or even on top of the board here. 
Cards are pretty simple as well. You're gonna be able to use your basic card forever. As long as you have it in your hand, which is gonna be always, you can play it. And the way cards work is uh, simple. You're gonna have the uh, damage in the middle left-hand side, then the amount of knockback, and then you're going to have on the very bottom left a bonus that you can use as opposed to using your card. So instead of using this card as an action, you can use the bonus, which will give you a movement of whatever it says. In this case, this one would be a plus two movement. So minus one action uh, will give you a movement bonus of two for this card. Some are three and some are four. But otherwise, you will be doing damage based on what your range is and how much the damage is. And you're going to also be able to do one of the three abilities on the card. And they'll tell you what they do. Some of them you can do before attacking, others you can do after attacking, and some don't matter. Basically, they're going to add items to the board or change the board in some way or your character in some way. And when you check for range, if there is no range on your card, it's adjacent. You have to be in an adjacent space next to your player. Uh, they have to be adjacent. And if they uh, have a range of up to three or four, you have to be within that range. So if I have a range of three on a card, then you have to be one, two, or three spaces away to play this card. Once you play a card, you can then play another card. If you have no movement left, your turn is done and you're going to go ahead and pass. Uh, whenever you do damage in the main mode, which is the elimination mode, uh, they will subtract that, that damage from their HP. And if you ever go to zero, you are eliminated from the game. And if it ever tells you to gain tokens on your cards, like these little power-up tokens, you'll gain those. With if, if any of these cards here have a specific space on them that will tell you uh, to either give yourself a bonus or a negative effect on the board here, like for instance, this guy here, you're gonna actually utilize these markers here. So for instance, it tells us that this space here on the board is going to have a negative effect in it and it'll have something that says, okay, if you end or begin your turn in this space, whatever it might say, you'll take X amount of damage and it'll last until your next turn. Some of them might be lasting effects that affect in this way. But otherwise, in this case, it's just an item card pops out, then you have to play your two cards and then you're going to go ahead and discard down to the eight cards in your hand, excluding the base card, which you will always have when you, whenever you play it regardless, you are going to pass. And the next player is going to get a chance to go. They'll get their boots, they'll flip over one of these cards to see what happens next. They'll place any items or any uh, triggers that might affect the game in some way. Perhaps everything falls, like in this case, and whenever everything falls, they'll all go down. Some of them might fall off the board, others might land on a specific platforming space. And as your character is in the air, if it falls, if it falls off the board, you're gonna lose two points, or you'll take two damage. And if you uh, are falling onto a platform, you'll just take one. Other ways you might take damage is landing on or hitting swords or jumping up onto them, or being getting pushed onto them as well. Because in the game, there's also things like knockback. There's this little blue symbol that states whenever you do that damage, if it has a one, two, or a three, you can push a player that many spaces. A couple other things to talk about too, since I think you basically understand the game, boots, card, move as much as you want, play up to two cards or take up to two actions and then check your hand size and pass, is how you can utilize these boards here. Now I've explained the, the pitfalls and the, the, the specific types of sword effects, but what you don't know is that in most platformers, you're able to actually go up and down certain types of terrain. All the small, thin types of terrain, you can actually move up through and down. However, you cannot attack through. Attacks are always going to be up, down, left, or right, and it's based on the number of spaces. And it can be um, diagonal as well, but it has to be in uh, a straight line, but only for ranged. For melee, it has to be up, down, left, or right. If there's a thicker space on platforming, then you are definitely not allowed to attack through it, but you're also not allowed to move through it either. You can, however, go through the under spaces, as long as there is a space, uh, on the terrain. And you can be as high as you want, or as low as you want in the air, but beware, because if you're not careful, you can fall through the terrain. And you'll just play like that, moving around the board, utilizing your actions and utilizing your movement to try and knock out your opponents, make them take damage on the spikes, do as much damage as you can with your characters, which are all unique and have different abilities, which I'll talk about in the review of the game, and attempt to gain as many bonus points as you can in the free-for-all mode, or try and eliminate all your opponents in the knockout mode, and finally, of course, there's the 2v2 mode, which functions as well that way. So that's basically how you play the game Iconoclash, it has that platformer style arena combat game. Let's talk about what I think about it and what everybody else thought about when we played this game currently on Kickstarter. 
So I've played a couple games that are similar to this where they try and recreate Smash Brothers in some type of way or a 2D fighting style game. And while some of those games are excellent, they don't, I think, do justice to what the feel of playing a platforming arena combat game really is, or what do they call it here? They call it a crossover platform fighter board game. It's basically just kind of a Smash Brothers on a tabletop game presence. Uh, and most people's question would be like, why don't I just play Smash Brothers as opposed to this? Well. In this case here, it has a different feel. Now, of course, you still feel like you're playing the platformer, but it becomes more of a tactical style combat game in which you're gonna be making choices based on how the board is presented, what cards you have, and how you're utilizing your character. And each character is gonna have a number of different cards, and they function differently. Maybe the specific title golem is gonna have a lot more shield specialization cards, that it's gonna be a different range of combat skills and complexity and flexibility, and it states all that on this card here. Here. And on the other side, it has a card detail. Uh, the character I was playing with was going to be the Conquistador, which is the little kitty cat here. And how this one functions is it utilizes item cards, which is nice because I didn't fully go into them, which I will now. Basically, the Conquistador likes to gather item cards, and basically how you do that is when you walk onto an item space, as long as you're not already there when it spawns, you'll get rid of this token and you'll draw an item card from the item deck, which is also fully customizable with the different options in the game. And these are going to be cards that function just like the cards in your deck. But once they go in your hand and are discarded, they will get discarded into the discard pile for the item deck. And they're going to have a certain number of damage and knockback and also a certain number of choices that you can make on the card for actions that will give you a bonus or benefit. But this character functions differently with them. They don't like to use these guys. They like to discard them. Um, and so the cat is going to be discarding these guys with utilizing their cards in order to do bonus damage. So it might say something like do two damage to a character that's within one range of you, plus two more damage for each item card that you discard. So you're gonna have to run around the board, gather more items, spawn more items, and do as much damage with those item cards as possible. Whereas somebody like the Shield Maiden is gonna be able to attack back whenever you attack her. Because another thing I didn't really fully mention is when you attack players, you don't just simply do damage to them, they have a chance to respond, thusly reducing the amount of damage that you are dealing to them, potentially doing additional damage to you, or if they don't have as much flexibility in the defense category, they still have defense cards, but they're gonna be utilizing is these power cards. They'll play a defense card to give them more power. Maybe they get more rage because you hurt them more, or maybe they're gonna be able to move faster next time because now they've been hit and they're scared or whatever you might wanna call it. Uh, so they're all gonna have unique defense cards that they can play. One defense card per attack card that is used against them, and those are the only cards that can be played out of turn for their actions. They'll be able to choose one of the three different actions on the defense card, and they're going to then be able to utilize them. And to tell the difference between a defense and an attack card, you'll look at the top left corner and note that. So the shield is the defense, the attack symbol, the sword is the attack symbol. And with the defense, you'll see that there is no knockback or damage. It's just gonna be those three options you can choose from. You'll choose one of them and you will do that. And you'll be drawing those cards at the end of your turn because you'll get two cards at the end of your turn every turn in order to kind of hold a unique set of new cards that you can mess with other opponents. What also I love about this game is the deck that involves the uh, specific arena. Now this deck actually makes the arenas feel different, much like in Smash Brothers, where you're gonna be playing on, oh, I don't know, like a racing track where cars can hit you, or you're gonna be playing on like an island where piranha plants come up and bite you. This deck is going to do something similar to those in which they're going to have unique hazard locations that will do rain fireworks on you, or uh, maybe they'll blast uh, specific types of fireballs or lasers, or, or potentially you're gonna have item spawns. The items will fall down and you'll be able to try and gather them. Or maybe it's going to tell you that everything falls. So when you're mid air, now it's time to fall and this event deck is going to tell you that and because everybody draws one by the time your turn comes around it's likely that you're going to fall so you need to be careful of where you end up at because it might affect you and you might lose HP but it might be worth it if you're willing to take that chance and risk staying above the ground hopefully by your turn you're able to move to a new location without falling because there is a possibility of that as well especially depending on the number of players playing the game. Uh, that being said, the characters and their functionality is very unique and very fun. I felt like I was playing a Smash Brothers style arena combat game, but I also felt like it was unique enough to where I wouldn't actually want to have to switch to the video game. I didn't go after playing this game, ah man, I wish I just went and played Smash Brothers, which I think is a very good thing. I also asked everybody else, because I thought that was the most important thing when it comes down to games like these is, wouldn't you rather just play Smash Brothers? And they said, no, this game is actually rather quite different than that, but it has the same feeling and the 
same style, and if you have a love for those style of video games, you're going to have a love for this board game as well. And it's something you can do together with other players on a board, uh, function similarly, but is not the same thing. And perhaps you don't have a video game console with you. Uh, and that was a nice thing to hear, because I wanted to feel justified in my reasoning and logic for how the game functioned. Um, now, of course, this is a prototype, so what you're getting here, and what you see here, is not going to be the final result, but I think that everything came together really nicely. All the pieces are very high quality. I'm excited to see what these little boards look like and the tokens. Obviously, they're all cut out, um, I think probably even manually. So you're going to see a lot nicer components. But what is here and how it is presented is very, very good. I'm always very surprised and very satisfied with SMG and how they make their games. So I have no doubt that this is going to be another high quality game as well. The artwork, extra solid. It lets you play with all the different Icono Clash characters. I'm sure there'll be different sets that you can choose from and character packs that you can pick up. And they give you these really nice meeples, these little wooden meeples that you'll be utilizing, but you'll be utilizing them face down onto the table presence. So you can see kind of a side platformer view. And as you move these guys, they all basically work pretty well on the board. Some of them are a little harder to fit in the squares because you'll be moving from square to square and um, they can kind of get squished in there, but it's not really a big deal. You can tell the difference between what one space and another. You might have to just kind of adjust them a little bit so that they look like they're swinging at each other. Uh, the board presence, the table presence, all that is excellent. Artwork is excellent. The quality is excellent in this game. If you like uh, these type of Smash Brothers style platforming style games, there's a couple other ones that just kind of escape my mind. Aval Hala, Brawlhalla, uh, then you're going to enjoy this style of game. If you like arena combat style games, if you want something that's more like a party game where you're walking around and punching people and knocking them out of the park because you can slide them off one way or up another way or they can fall down if you push them in another way, then you're going to enjoy this game. It has a lot of laughter, has a lot of those like gritty moments and we're actually been playing this game uh, live on stream this upcoming week. So you can actually see this game played on our stream at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sunday on Facebook and on Twitch and then it'll be up on YouTube here on Monday. So you'll get a chance to view everything and see what we thought of it as we played it and might give you a more understanding of whether this is something for you or not. But for me, excellent game, super solid, had a lot of fun with it. The only slight negatives I had with the game, I suppose, are that yes, they don't, it's harder to fit some of these guys in the squares, but it is a prototype, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be there or not. Some players aren't gonna like the nastiness of the game because while it is fun and it is like laughter filled, uh, you can kind of target one person and kind of punch them down like you would in the video games. Um, and so you might get picked on, but most likely not so much. And in some cases it doesn't even matter because of the different types of game modes and how you can play with each other. And um, I guess technically once your turn is over in a certain game mode, the, the free-for-all, after you've gained enough points, other players can kind of manipulate your points and you might not have a chance to do anything about it on the very last round, in which case you might fall behind to have somebody else win. There could be a kingmaker situation that kind of is formed in that scenario, which is of course my least favorite of the different uh, choices and I would always prefer to just play the free-for-all uh, elimination mode, which I think is the best anyway, which is also the base game's main variant. So uh, that's pretty much about it. Uh, overall though, Iconoclash is a solid game Castle Clash. Go ahead and pick this up on Kickstarter if you'd really like it. I, I do. I think this is a good one. I think you guys will as well. Thank you guys for watching the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Icono Clash Castle Clash. It's currently on Kickstarter like I said a bunch of times. Go ahead and take a look at the campaign. There's a link down below in the description where you can pick it up if you would like and see all the different things. I don't know what exactly is all going to be on here but I imagine there's going to be additional characters you can choose from. I see on the back of these uh, the different types of characters that you can utilize. So you able to play with uh, the different characters. And I think I've actually seen even some of these characters in other games. In fact, no, I, I know for a fact I have because this is Chris Solis's game. So there's going to be a, a quite a few different characters that you're going to be able to take a look at. Or maybe it's from an IP. I don't know. I don't, 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 don't quote me. <laughs> also go ahead and check out our live stream, which I talked about. We'll be playing this game here. Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. You can go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this one. And as always, guys, I look forward to Icono clashing with you next time. Fade out.